Computational thinking is defined in the Australian curriculum as a set of problem-solving skills. Using data logically, breaking down problems into parts, using algorithms, patterns and models. This is one way of understanding computational thinking, but there is another. Professor Seymour Papert first coined the term in the 1960s, and he had a very different perspective. For Papert, computational thinking was the way in which digital technologies changed the way students thought when they interacted with computers. Computational thinking can be much more than just a collection of skills and processes, abstraction, decomposition, algorithms, etc. It is a communication between student and machine in which digital technologies are an extension of our minds, letting us create and think more effectively. Steve Jobs also identified this. I think one of the, the things that really separates us from the high primates is that uh, we're tool builders. And I read a, uh, a study that measured the efficiency of locomotion for various species on the planet. The condor used the least energy to move a kilometer. And uh, humans came in uh, with a rather unimpressive showing about a third of the way down the list. It was not, not uh, too proud of a showing for the crown of creation. So uh, that didn't look so good. But then somebody at Scientific American had the insight to test the efficiency of locomotion for a man on a bicycle. And a man on a bicycle or a human on a bicycle blew the condor away, completely off the top of the charts. And that's what a computer is to me. Uh, what a computer is to me is it's the most remarkable tool that we've ever come up with. And it's the equivalent of a bicycle for our minds. Our aim in digital technologies is to empower all students to be able to think differently and to be more creative with the aid of computers. As a personal example, in a programming course in my undergraduate degree, our assignment was to write a word processing program from, from first principles. And I had to learn how such software worked with tags and sorting routines, etc. But ever since then, I have worked with business education teachers who teach word processes as their speciality. And they have learnt and taught far more about the functions and features of word processes than I will ever know. But when they had a problem with formatting or some other issue that they could not understand, they would come to me. And within a few seconds of looking at their problem, I could often provide a solution. Not because I understood the software, or even because I understood how the software should work, but my deep understanding of computing let me think about problems from a completely different way to my business education colleagues. Even shown the solution and the reasoning behind it, they simply did not have the thinking skills to be able to conceptualize how to derive such solutions. In computational thinking, we are developing in students this ability to understand digital technologies that they will then encounter during their lives. Not to become computer programmers, but to understand and engage with digital technologies so that they can see the potential and opportunities that can arise from them. And more importantly, so that they can think differently about problems. This they can use in any career. At the most basic level, is so when the IT help desk says no, they can say no right back and insist that something should be able to be done. But it will also enable them to see the opportunities that digital technologies afford them as they encounter problems and challenges in their jobs and their lives, and to either solve these themselves or to be able to direct others to solve them. And of course, for some students, they will use these thinking skills to become entrepreneurs, and take opportunities to create new innovative solutions to problems that we do not yet even recognize. But as Papert challenged us, we can also study digital technologies to improve the way students think. Yes, this will involve them using and developing skills such as abstraction, decomposition and algorithms, identifying patterns and modeling real world processes. And skill development can be done efficiently through direct instruction, worksheets, and computer-based tutorials. But it is through project-based learning that students use these skills to develop their confidence and cognitive ability to solve real-world problems with digital technologies. And it is through this that we see the full potential of computational thinking expressed.